So before I start, uh, I want to ask a question. Uh, is that who knows titanium? So two hands, three hands. So that's why I'm here. Um, so let me uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Rene Pot. I'm 30 <laughs> years old. I'm a developer evangelist at Xway Accelerator. Um, Xway Accelerator, or previously Accelerator, makes titanium. Um, I'm from Hilversum in the Netherlands, which is a really tall town. Yes. I love Hilversum. You love Hilversum. All right, so it's a really small town in the Netherlands, so I'm, uh, I'm happy to hear that someone actually knows it or lived in it. Um, okay, so I, um, I started developing in 2000. If you do some quick math, you see I was 12. Um, and since 2008, I've been um, a full-time developer, and three years later, I started building apps with Titanium. Um, so what is Titanium? Um, well, most of you have probably heard of React Native. Um, titanium is something that does something similar as that. Um, you can build mobile apps with JavaScript. And this is how you build a, a, a basically Hello World app. It's just a couple lines that works. Um, and this, has been, this code has been the same since probably 2009. Um, so if you also know React Native, you might have known that React Native only started it like a couple years ago. So uh, we are predating it a little bit. Um, so what, what it is, is it is JavaScript SDK. Uh, it's really stable in a sense that um, I've been using it myself for seven years before I even started joined this company. So I have some user experience there. Um, I rarely run into any issues. I rarely have to look into community stuff. I rarely have to submit tickets. I mean, you have to do submit. You have to submit tickets for every open source project. But in my opinion, this one had the least amount of maintenance. Um, it's enterprise backed in the sense that you see the Xway logo on the bottom. They they pay my bill. Uh, they allowed me to come here. Um, and there's also a lot of enterprise customers. That said, it's fully free and open source. It's on GitHub. All the work we do is on GitHub. Nothing private, nothing pre-released to our customers. Like everything is there. If an enterprise customer submits a bug, they get priority fixes, you get them too. Um, and that's, uh, I think, one of the things that stands out in that sense to, for example, React Native, is they don't care about you. They care about their own products. And if it, by accident, suits you and Facebook, then they'll be happy. And you'll be happy. On top of the Titanium SDK, we have an MVC. Um, which makes things a little bit easier to see. Um, previously, you ha had what you have on the, on the left, and on the right, you see uh, what you can do with uh, some splitting up of code. And what this gives you is separation of concerns, um, because, well, you can independently create your views, and it will still be maintainable, it will be easier to understand for you as a user and for you as a, uh, as a software team. Like if you work with 10 people, it can be really complicated if you, if you have to write a lot of code like that on the left and you don't even know where, like what's in the window and what's, how is it nested and you can see it really well here. Uh, but most importantly, it has built in garbage collection. Uh, garbage collection on mobile is a really big thing because um, if you have a 100 pound Android phone that has little, that doesn't have a lot of memory, it has 100 other applications running at the same time, you're probably limited to a couple megabytes of memory. And you need to work with that. Um, there's theming, which is easy if you have an app that needs to run. And like the, the code needs to be in several, two different applications, but they both need to look uh, differently. Um, so you can do themes there, and this is uh, can be really cool. I'm going to demo this shortly. Um, it's easily extendable. What that means is you can easily insert well uh, npm modules, or you can easily insert uh, uh, your own blocks of code that you can reuse in other apps, or blocks of code that can go into um, for, that come from other users. Um, and there's, there's a lot more to it. Um, and there's also Backbone use. Uh, I know Backbone is ancient technology by now. I mean, it's probably one of the oldest frameworks that's still alive. Um, but it does its job really well inside Titanium. And that's why we stick with it. And also some, some rules and styling. You can say platform is Android, platform is iOS. For custom styling properties, you can also put in your own variables there. 
with an if is. Um, these kind of things, you get some of the classes and ID stuff from CSS. Um, but this is not CSS, this is DSS. It's a bit, might be a bit confusing, uh, but um, a lot of the logic there works. And I already sort of mentioned it. What, is, what about Framework X? So usually React Native, uh, because that's what everyone uses. Um, so then I say, what about it? Um, because Titanium stands out in a couple things. And this is coming from me as a user before I joined this company. I know I'm like biased because I work for them. Uh, but I don't care. Um, I also don't uh, promote any of their uh, so-called paid stuff, because everything is free anyways for me. Uh, and all the things you want is free and open source. Um, so what is Titanium? What makes Titanium better than another platform is besides the fact that uh, you are not dependent on Facebook and them don't caring about their users. Um, and in that, I don't mean that as their Facebook platform, but I mean React Native is built by Facebook. Um, and they don't put in the core what they don't feel like should be, like helps Facebook. Um, so for example, if you want to use Google Maps uh, on Android or Apple Maps on iOS, you are fully dependent on the, com on the community. And that's something that's uh, uh, in Titanium is we have that for free and open source. We officially, officially make it. So our core is bigger. We have a lot more in there, a lot more functionalities. Um, it's also like going in a weird order here. Um, it's, it's easier to learn. Like you see, you saw that code there. It's so simplistic. You can just almost guess how it works. Um, and I've helped a lot of people get into Titanium over the years. And but pretty much everyone, especially from a Node.js background, and that's why I'm here, of course, uh, uh, they are like within a week, they are just full on on Titanium and they, they understand how it works. Like it always is a learning curve to get into a new framework, uh, but the learning curve is really slow. Uh, slow. Uh, how do you say that? Flat? Shallow? Um, so it's, it's, it's really easy. Um, and there's better support of native elements. It means um, and I haven't tried this for, for some time, but with React Native, uh, it, when I created the tab group, and it was like, it's like three years ago, when I created the tab group and I added two tabs to it, and then I expected them to be positioned next to each other, right? How you, how you see them on iOS. Um, and what happened is they were both positioned on top of each other, and this is natively not even possible. Um, so I was wondering, like, how do they do that? And they basically mimic it. It's not an actual tab group. It's basically they create their own UI elements and they position them there and they style them the same, but it's not a tab group. And this gives you a lot of benefits in some sort, but also a lot of downsides. For example, if iOS decides to completely change their UI like they did before from iOS 6 to iOS 7, then your app will look outdated for a bit. And there's a lot more examples like that. So what about Node? Um, so Node.js is kind of difficult to implement in the sense that uh, we need to rely, or we need to support all devices. For example, only with the latest release candidate of the RSDK, um, we dropped iOS 8 support. And iOS 8 is already quite old, but not as old as, I, as Android 4.1, which we still support. Uh, no, we start. We moved to 4.4 recently, but 4.4 is still like I don't know, seven years old, something like that. Um, so, supporting older uh, OS versions also gives us limitations because we cannot fully support everything. So, what we did recently is, um, well, the, the some core stuff there that I've listed. Um, we are mimicking this. So, if you use those. Um, they will be they will automatically work in titanium because there's no node bundled so like everything that's that that's that you put in the app is just fully javascript no node.js is, is bundled in the application so we need to need to mimic it so a couple of things we have i mean console we probably have forever um, but some other stuff uh, that's important is like uh, no modules most, most node modules will work as long as they don't support don't use any core modules that are not on this list um, but usually, like your way of working with Node, um, you can just take that mindset, move it to Titanium, 
And the only thing you have to add is generating of UI. But that was XML, so it sort of looks, looks the same as well. and should be really easy to understand. And you can do more. So we have uh, Vue.js and Angular support. It's in beta, but it works. Uh, you can just, like with Angular 6, uh, I think 6 is the latest, right? Um, it's not the latest. It's already on 7 now, but then, then we support 7. Um, <laughs> It's, um, uh, that's, that's in TypeScript, so we do support TypeScript um, and Vue.js. Well, you can just use the logic you use there and, uh, and move on. Uh, so Vue.js example here. Um, we're most ha enthusiastic about, uh, about this, but technology-wise, for us to develop both, and they're both open source, by the way, uh, is like, it's sort of in the same flow. So if Vue gets improved, then usually <coughs> Angular gets improved as well. Um, then, as I said, it's open source. We have over 10k PRs. Uh, we're getting closer to 11k. I think we'll reach 11k to, uh, this year. Um, most of them are from our core team. A lot of them are from community members that said, well, I missed this feature, or this thing should, can be worked a little better, or, well, then they submit a PR and we, uh, we merge it in. Uh, so the core is open source. The uh, LIMPC is open source. Um, there's lots of modules, like probably like 40 different modules that are open source uh, that you can use. So I said earlier I'm going to do a small demo. Uh, so let me uh, let me go there. I have pre-written my code. I also have a dark theme. Um, let me see. So let me run the application. I have Wi-Fi, so I should be able to use this. And now I'm compiling for iOS. It will also work on Android, but Android compiling is really slow um, because the compiling process itself is slow. It's not because of that thing. Uh, iOS is usually like a couple seconds. Um, most of the time it's waiting on a simulator to boot. There we go. So I have a simple application. Uh, it's not much. It's just a list view where you can dynamically add some items to, and that's it. And if you can see in the source, we have a navigation window with a window nested, and we require something in there. And require can be uh, a node module that exposes UI creators. It can be a native module. It can be any widgets that someone created. Uh, it can be a lot of things. In this case, it's just a, a local controller. Uh, which is a list view with a section and an item in it, and it uses data binding from Backbone. So what you can see in the code here is, in the list view code, is I add two items to our uh, collection, and then it automatically renders. Uh, so when you add a model or a change a model, or um, the UI will automatically refresh as well. So this is, I mean, most apps are data like w simple ways to view your data. Um, most apps talk to APIs. So using this kind of thing is what pretty much all apps do. Um, and um, so I have, I have a click event handle, uh, add here that just uh, logs what item I press. Of course, in this case, you should open a window or add some pop-up or something like that. Um, but I wanted to keep the code clean and simple. And in this controller, I don't do anything. I have a handle open function that's uh, called when the window actually opens, uh, but that didn't add any logic to that there. Uh, so that's pretty much it um, for the code. Uh, what, else, what else do I have is the theming. And in this case, I have a theme red. Let me uh, collapse some stuff. So and, uh, theme red means I have a themed file. And it can be images, it can be fonts, it can be anything. I just have a config.json, which is a exposed a global. And I have a color for the bar on top. So if I change this to green, uh, sorry, blue, then I have a different color. Um, and now I go to my main one, and I say here, uh, blue. And then I recompile, 
because I broke the live view, which we also have live view. That means it automatically updates the view. But with our, re with our new release, which I haven't used on this application, it's changed a little bit. And now you can see it's blue. And this all gets done on compile level. So the application itself doesn't have the red configuration in it. Um, so that also means that if you put different images in there, they won't com be compiled both. And this is also well, really convenient if you have uh, different apps. But you can style any file pretty much. So if you say, okay, my index file needs to look completely different, then you can do that, not just colors. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much uh, uh, in terms of code what I have running. And you saw I did, I did a couple of compiles. It was really quick developing. And if I had a live view working, it was even faster than that. So um, then usually there's a couple of questions, um, which I answered already for you. Um, are there any notable examples of using titanium? Because no one knows titanium. And if they figure out well, who uses it, um, so I asked uh, uh, a friend of mine here that lives here in the UK um, to, uh, because he also partially works a, as an evangelist. Like, are there any UK-based apps using Titanium? Because it's hard to see, right? The, but the actual compiled application is looking as native as any native app. So like, I don't see if it's in Titanium. I can see if it's a PhoneGap app, but because it's, it's a web view, but I don't see anything, any Titanium apps. So notable examples. This one, EDF Energy. Uh, if you download the APK, you'll see some classes in there from Titanium. You have to actually prove that it's, it is a Titanium app. Um, there's this one. I mean, I never downloaded these apps, by the way. I just, uh, I only verified that they use Titanium in the code. Um, so UKTV, uh, Change for Life Food Scanner, uh, which I don't know myself. And then there, if there's people in a, in a room that play games, you may, might play Warframe. And the companion app that comes with it uh, is built in Titanium as well. I've heard from the developer that they have a couple million downloads on iOS and a couple million downloads on Android. So it's a pretty big app. Um, and someone in the community recently built this. It's a password manager that generates passwords, not by something else, but by a pattern. And it's looking pretty interesting. Of course, no one probably knows this because it's brand new. I was on Product Hunt the other day. Um, do you support ES6? Um, being that we are 10 years old by now, uh, yes, we do. Uh, but it's, um, uh, it's used, it's more, uh, it's do, we're doing polyfill and transpiling to make sure it also runs well on old Androids and old and iOS devices. So there are some limitations there. Um, do we support TypeScript? And yes, absolutely, we do. We support TypeScript. And TypeScript, there we go. Uh, we have some boilerplates. Basically, what, you, what we do is we have a pre-compile hook that our compiler sees and just runs the compile command. And then we have JavaScript, and of course, then it's fine. So TypeScript, yes, absolutely. And our boilerplates are on GitHub. And if you scan this QR code, then you can actually go there. Um, but if you Google for Titanium TypeScript, then you'll find the same repository and blog post as well. So that's it. Um, my contact details are here. Uh, I also do a lot of open source stuff because I'm getting paid to do free stuff. And speaking of free stuff, I have stickers here, uh, which is, uh, is this one. So if you want one, go get one because it's free here. And, uh, and that's it. Great.